few years ago, I was asked by a, a major European festival to put together a program on the theme of Cosmos, which was the theory of or the theme of the festival. And I thought, Cosmos, how can that fit together with the repertoire that we play? And so I started looking around and looked on the internet and so forth. And right away, I came across the figure of Johannes Kepler, whom, of course, I had heard of. Everyone has heard of him. Um, and discovered that among his many interests, because he was really many-sided figure and not only was interested in cosmology and mathematics and astrology and um, optics and all sorts of things. He was also very interested in and knowledgeable about music and he always saw music from the point of view of, well, I shouldn't say always because he had a, a theoretical point of view about music but also a very practical one and he understood music, as Charles Burney said about Kepler, as an elegant art and not just a theoretical one. So I began looking uh, a little bit further into Kepler and I realized not only all of that, but also that he lived in exactly the right time for the repertoire of Concerto Palatino, because it was really exactly the golden age of the cornetto and the trombone and that music that brings us together with singers and so it seemed like a perfect thing to try to imagine which composers Kepler would have known and heard and we knew we know from his own words that he loved the music of Orlando di Lasso more than any other So we thought we'd start with Lasso as a point of departure and focus and then expand to other composers that he would have encountered or whose music he would have heard. We know that when Kepler was in Graz, uh, a not very well known a Venetian composer named Annibale Perini came to Graz and brought the Venetian style with him and would certainly have brought Andrea Gabrieli, because it was the right period. Other composers who Kepler might have encountered in Prague, like Hans Leo Hassler, or Lambert de Sèvres, who is a not so well known Flemish composer who worked um, in Graz for part of his career and uh, wrote um, absolutely wonderful polyphonic music and polychoral music. This idea that Kepler was living in a very difficult, turbulent time. And I think he turned to his studies of the heavens, um, particularly in particular measurements of the planets and their orbits, as a way of finding harmony in the world. And he found uh, a remarkable parallel between the harmony that he saw in the heavens, and in particular in the solar system, and the harmony that he found in music. All of these ideas are expressed most fully in this massive treatise that uh, 
Kepler um, published in 1619, Harmonicus Mundi. I wanted to have a piece um, in this program to bring um, our present day um, sensibilities into this idea of cosmology. And I thought of Kaliyoke Tsupaki because I had I've played several pieces of hers, and liked very much what she does, and so I asked her to start thinking about what she, how she could approach the idea of, of Kepler, um, the solar system, the cosmos, and what she could do with that, what kind of a text she could find to, uh, to write a piece. And I, of course, Kepler said, invites composers of his day to write polyphonic music to rival that of Orlando di Lasso. Uh, as the expression of the solar system. I didn't really think that I could ask Calliope to write a six-part polyphonic piece to compete with Orlando di Lasso. It's not what she does, it's not her language, it's also not our language as a, as a culture of 21st century. So she, she studied very hard on this subject and read many of the things that Kepler wrote and things written about Kepler. And she she ultimately came to the idea of setting uh, an Orphic hymn, which is a kind of invocation to the stars, um, and to create a kind of dialogue piece between a, 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 a Greek chorus of a tragedy that doesn't exist and an instrumental ensemble. And I think she's made a wonderful, dramatic, uh, quite thrilling piece out of it.